Um, so thank you very much for coming. Um, we are partnering with uh, it's a few different teams today. So um, welcome from UCL. We've also got the University of London Housing Service or Housing Advice Service, I should say, here with us. We've got a couple of current UCL students. We've got George and Carlo. Um, George is a UK student and Carlo is an international student. We've also got Chris here from the International Student Support Team. So Chris is an expert on all things international. Um, and we've got a representative from the Students Union as well. We've got Yasmin, um, who is a budgeting expert. Um, so first things first, I'm going to hand over to Rav from the University of London Housing Advice Service. Rav's going to give us a quick overview before we dive into some more detail. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Rav. I'm from the University of London Private Housing Services. The purpose of today is to go for a quick overview on the first steps to moving in. I should let you all aware that we do have a full longer version on our YouTube channel. So please look for University of London Housing Services on YouTube. We also have a Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram. So as a service, what we do, we help to find accommodation and we also help to find flatmates. Speaking of flatmates, on the 13th of September, we will be having our flatmate finder at Senate House. So if you can come along, that'd be great. That'd be a great opportunity for you all to meet other students. We will have icebreakers and games and just give you, on the day, giving you advice also on what to look for for property. So if you're looking for flatmates, please attend this um, event. We also do have a Facebook um, flatmate finder page. So again, a great resource for you all to um, use. We also, um, as a service, check contracts for you. So when you do find a property and you would like us to look over our contract, you can book an appointment with us. We will make sure that it's all legal. We will do the a land registry check to make sure that the landlord is the landlord of the property and answer any questions you may have. And we also give um, housing advice in general. So if you ever do have any um, problems during your tenancy or you feel like your landlord's not doing something that they shouldn't, or, you know, we will give you um, legal advice. Okay, first thoughts when thinking about property is the type of accommodation. Okay, sorry, I've just been informed my, sh my slides are not um, sharing. Um, please let me, bear with me one moment. Do apologize for that. Um, can someone please tell me if I can see my screen? That's perfect. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so, and hopefully my slides have changed. Yeah, perfect. Sorry about that. So first thoughts when thinking about different types of accommodation. Generally, you, when private renting, you'll have um, a property where you'll share with other students or you may have, for example, the private um, student halls and sometimes you'll have properties where it's a living landlord, which is like a license agreement. Um, things to consider what kind of property will suit you. If you're someone who is very sociable, don't mind living with other people, then of course um, a shared accommodation would be great for you. If you're more of a quiet person who prefers to be independent, then it may be worth looking for a, a single property where you'll just be by yourself. And location is key, which I know will be discussed um, for a, a lot during today. Um, you'll need to consider time and travel, costs. And for some students, they may want to be somewhere where there's local amenities, such as a gym, or if you're someone who needs regular medication, a pharmacy close by might be something you really need. So these are types of things to consider when looking for properties. Okay, so flats and houses, private halls, resident landlords. We do also have our University of London um, property platform. So this is a great resource for you all. It's absolutely free. On, on our platform, landlords upload their properties. We will make sure that all the safety certificates are there and they are credible landlords. So please use this, um, it's a great resource. 
and our website housing.london.ac.uk we'll we have lots of resources for like we have um, our events page so where we will post upcoming talks and seminars okay um previously mentioned to you all our flatmate finder facebook group so great again a great resource for you all to use if you're looking for flatmates and want to meet new people the most students tend to use these resources, Spare Room, Right Move, Zoopla, Open Rent. Um, these are okay, um, but we do recommend, like especially with Gumtree, to be cautious because they're not checked. A lot of scams tend to happen with properties on Gumtree. But it, I'm not saying every um, property be a scam. If you do find a property and you'd just like us to check it out for you, just book an appointment with us and we can do that for you. One of the big things you need to ask yourself is, can you afford the property? When you're signing a contract, you are bound by that contract, unless there's a break clause which allows you to leave early. So if you're signing a year contract, you need to ask yourself, can I afford the whole year? Um, one thing I'd like to um, go through is joint liability. So when you do sign a contract with other tenants, you are all jointly reliable. So you need to have that conversation um, because it's it's a kind of, if let's say you all agree to pay the bills, if someone doesn't pay their share of the bill, unfortunately the other tenants will have to cover that cost. So it's good to have that conversations to make sure that everyone can afford that tenancy. Be cautious of um, money transfers. Um, most reputable organizations do not ask to use like Western Union MoneyGram. Um, and a general rule to remember is if it sounds too good to be tr true, it probably is. Again, if in doubt, please ask us. Virtual viewings, um, I appreciate many of you will be international students and the only option you may have is a virtual viewing. If you do know someone in the UK, ask them to have a look. Just, oh, can you pop in with the agent? Because, and also ask the agent, when was that video taken? They might be showing you a video that was taken six months before. There's no harm in asking for an updated video. Um, so if your friends do visit a property, you can ask them to take pictures. However, if there are um, people currently living in the property and they have their belongings, ask their permission first. So the Tenant Fee Act was a brilliant piece of legislation that came into force. Um, uh, it banned most administrative fees. And so, for example, if if, a, um, if you approach a landlord and a lad's landlord says to you, um, yep, you can have this property, but you have to pay £200 to draft a contract, that's prohibited. They cannot do that. So if you are asked for any fees like that, please approach us and ask for advice. Okay. Um, once you've found your property, you viewed it, you're happy with it, in most cases, the estate agent or landlord will ask for a holding deposit. A holding deposit can only be one week's worth of the rent, and this will be refundable to you once the tenancy commences. However, please only pay this if you're absolutely sure you want the property, because if you pull out, it'll be very hard to get that money back. But if the agent or landlord for some reason don't go ahead, you will get that money back. Okay, there will be some additional requirements before you move into the property, such as right to rent checks. If landlords and agents ask for your passport, this is just a statutory requirement they have to do. Um, with guarantors, unfortunately, most landlords will ask for a guarantor. And if you're an international student, they will, in most cases, ask for the rent to be paid up front. What we advise is if a landlord, let's say a landlord or agent, asks for the whole year up front, negotiate. Maybe pay six months up front, and the following six months, you'll pay month to month. But unfortunately, 
if a landlord or agent are requiring you to pay it all up front, there is nothing you can do except negotiate to see if they can compromise. Unless you've got a UK-based guarantor who's willing to be a guarantor. So damage deposit, sorry. Um, if your annual rent is below 50,000, they can ask for five weeks um, as a hold, sorry, as a security, um, as a security deposit. This will be paid back to you at the end of your tenancy, providing that you haven't caused any damages and you've paid your rent. Oh, it will be explained a little bit more in depth later on with regarding the deposits. Please visit um, our housing guide. It's got some very useful information. Um, we've got two resources there for you, london.gov.uk slash rents. Um, on our housing guide, it gives you a rough idea on certain areas what the rent will be, but due to the economic crisis, it's changing all the time. So I can't give you a definite figure, unfortunately. So where you can get advice, of course, from us, whilst you are a student, our service is free for you all. Um, you've also got your college um, student services team. Um, Shelter England and Citizen Advice are free um, or organisations where you can get legal advice on housing. Um, to contact us, um, these are, are provided our contact details. So housing.london.ac.uk, where we post all our events. Um, if you want to book an appointment with us, um, you don't have to come to Senate House if that's difficult for you. We do offer Teams appointments, telephone appointments also. And that's the end of my slides. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much, Rav. Um, that was really helpful. Um, I'm just going to pick up on one point that you made um, about guarantors. Um, so UCL has a guarantor scheme, um, okay. which can be um, applied to by international students. Okay. Um, there's much more information on our website about how that all works. But the basically bo the bottom line is you need to have all of your ducks in a row. So um, because it takes a couple of days to come through, you need to make sure you've got all your paperwork ready. But yeah, don't don't miss out on the uh, the guarantor scheme. That is an option that's available to UCL students who are um, international and then those in kind of specific circumstances. Um, the other point I was going to ask about was we've got a question in the chat from Sarah. Um, the 13th of September Flatmate Finder event um, can offer holders attend that event. Yep. Um, I'll say offer holders. Um, yes, I believe, yes, they can. That's great. Um, so there's, that's, that's really good for, uh, for the offer holders who are on the call. Um, you've got, there's an event run by the University of London Housing Advice Service on the 13th of September at Senate House, which is all about flatmate finding. There is also a Facebook group, um, which Rav shared the link to, um, if someone could pop that into the question and answer, that would be all the chat. That would be great as well. Um, so that we've got the link there. Um, Fantastic. OK, so I think we're going to move into um, our big question list. Please do um, pop questions into the Q&A um, if you've got them. We will try to get to as many as we can. Um, but we're also we've got a we're going to cover this in a kind of journey sense. So right from the start of when you're thinking about who your flatmates are all the way through to the end of tenancy, which is quite a long time uh, in the future. So let's start by thinking about flatmates. How do you go about finding flatmates, choosing flatmates um, for this question? And you know, what do you need to think about when you're picking your housemates? Um, George or Carlo, as our current students, have you got any guidance for the for the students on the on the call? Should we go um, to George first? Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, choosing your flatmates is probably like one of the most important things. I think first of all, it's really important to learn about your schedules. So like, are you a morning person? Are you an evening person? Because I think if your flatmates are waking up really early in the morning and you can hear their alarm, like that's really not going to be nice for you. Um, and I know I had that experience a lot. Um, and also how clean you are. So in terms of like the kitchen and your like say the living room spaces like that um it's really important that you live with people say who have the same standards with you um because that could really impact how you live in your um, new place and as well and the kind of property you want um 
So are you all looking for, say, like more of a, um, like on an estate or are you looking for like more of a house where you have much more bigger spaces, but you'll say a bit more further outside of London? Um, and as well, things like how close you are to campus. So where I am, I wanted to be walking distance. Um, and I originally was planning to live with some people that were happy with like commuting, but ended up that we couldn't find any places that we both agreed on. Um, and so I just had to change, but it's really important to start having conversations about it early on in the year, um, because quite often, like it's a very stressful time. And so the more people you talk about, like what you like in the house or say, um, what your budget is and things like that like the easier it is to solve it um college you have any other extra points well personally i was very lucky i ended up living with uh two course mates of mine so i knew them fairly well um and um, we did have a very very honest like discussion of budgeting and like uh, how far we wanted to live from campus uh pretty early so before we started the viewings then when i flew to the UK to do all the viewings. Um, of course, since uh, one of my flatmates is also international, it was just me doing all the viewings. Um, I had like a list of all the things that they wanted um, that we had agreed upon. And so uh, it was very easy to find the right flat for us. I already knew what I was looking for. That's great. Thank you both so much for those uh, for those bits of advice. Um, sticking on the kind of budget theme now. So, Carlo, you mentioned you had a very honest conversation with your future flatmates about budgeting. Um, I think honesty is important when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, Yasmin, did you have any other advice around like calculating your budget, things you need to think about, or even advice on talking to kind of future flatmates about budgets? Yeah, of course. Um, so I think budgeting your money is a really important tool during your academic journey. Um, it really helps you create kind of financial stability and, so, and sort of keeps you on track of your expenses. Personally, I budget every month. It just helps me manage my spending and make sure and ensures that I'm not short at it every month. So there are kind of different ways you can calculate your budget. I think most students at the start of the academic year will have some sort of minimum income coming in. Um, at the beginning, it might seem like quite a lot of money, but you should really think about how you're going to make your money stretch. Um, so first thing I would do is sort of calculate your income. So think about the money you have coming in in terms of your student loan. So you might be receiving a maintenance loan um, you might be receiving some sort of other financial support like a stipend, funds from a scholarship or bursary, income from working, um, any family support or savings. Then you kind of <clears throat> want to total your income to find out how much money you have to spend. And then you want to think about things like your outgoings as well. So especially things like your essential outgoings. So these are things like your tuition fees, if you're um, self-funding your studies or rent for your accommodation, house bills. Most, I mean, I know student, most student accommodation has bills included, but most private accommodation, you have to pay for your bills separately. So think about that as well travel costs um you know some students tend to kind of want to live a bit further away from campus so really think about how much travel is going to cost you to get to get in um travel in london can be very expensive um some students have credit cards and other debts that they're repaying and phone bills so kind of think about your essential outgoings and then minus them from your income ins and then whatever you kind of have left would be your money to kind of spend on social activities any equipment you need from your course, um, any kind of savings or holidays you want to save for. Um, just to add, there are lots of budgeting tips out there. Um, money dashboard is a really good one for people that are on their phones constantly. It kind of helps you categorize your spending and kind of displays all your incomings and outgoings. Also, if you're a person that really is into spreadsheets, UCAS have a really good um, spreadsheet you can use. Um, in terms on advice for talking with housemates, I think um, just communication is key. I think it's really important to find out um, a budget that is acceptable for all of you in the household and um, be clear on what everyone can afford so you're not struggling financially. Um, and just be sure to look for properties that you can afford to, to rent and pay for. 
I've worked in higher education for a good couple of years and I find that a lot of students tend to get themselves into really high tenancy agreements and then after a couple of months they're really struggling to pay their rent so just be clear on on what you can afford there's some really good budgeting apps out there as well that kind of helps you um, figure out how much money you can spend on rent um, and I'm happy to share them in the chat as well. Thank you very much, Yasmin. That's really helpful. Um, I think all of that guidance around budgeting is very important. That's not just important when you're a student. It's important when you're kind of a young professional all the way through to uh, being a pensioner. Um, getting a handle on your budget early is a very good plan. Um, personally, I favour a spreadsheet. Um, just Thank so you. on the kind of finding housemates point, um, Chris, Wanda, do you have any advice for international students who might be, they might not be at UCL yet, they might be coming and looking for a private rental. Um, any advice on finding flatmates? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think these points have already been mentioned, but one of them is in, if you are going to be coming, coming over with people that you know. So if, for example, some people are coming over maybe as exchange students from the same university uh, for six months or for a year, or some postgraduate taught students are coming over with people that they know, I'd absolutely advocate all of you finding a place together because you'll be with people that you know. So firstly, advocate that. If you're coming over on your own, which is actually far more likely, um, there are some really useful groups. Um, we always promote the Facebook Finder one. I think that Rav um, first shares. So that's a really, really good resource. And it is a more official resource as well. So those are always, um, be chosen first. There are some slightly, I would say less official, but other resources. This is a popular one um, that's been shared with our team by international students. So this is called Student Room, and this is where you can meet potential flatmates. And another one for new international um, postgraduate taught students, a Facebook group has been set up. This is another way that you can find, for example, for postgraduate taught students, other ones coming in. And then I don't know if we do have any uh, Chinese students here, but this society here is incredibly helpful for Chinese students um, finding accommodation um, in London. Um, but another point that I think is going to be mentioned as well is if you are a new international student coming in um, and you are struggling to find accommodation, perhaps consider booking like an Airbnb or a hotel for a shorter period of time so that you can be in the UK and then can find accommodation because the reality is it's a lot easier to find accommodation when you're in the city versus doing it um, from abroad. Thank you very much. Um, all really helpful advice. Um, so I think we're now going to move on to uh, kind of so you've got your flatmates or you know you're going to maybe look at um, doing a spare room something like that. Um, how do we then start going about flat hunting? So Rav, you mentioned a couple of the sites that we use. Could you just recap those? And then I think we'll ask George and Carlo how they did it. So there are quite a few sites out there. The most common are Rightmove and Zoopla. Um, they're more for if you're looking for a whole property to share with others. If you're looking for like a single room, open rent and spare room tend to be the ones some students most use. Um, Again, some people do use Gumtree. The only concern we have with Gumtree is they are kind of known to have more scammers on there. Again, I'm not saying that Gumtree are all full of scams, but it's just to be cautious. Thank you very much. And then we've also had a question in the Q&A about whether there are sort of landlords who are specifically for students other than uh, the kind of private providers like Unite. Um, where might students find information about kind of other options in terms of landlords? Um, I know for UCL, we have our alternative accommodation page. That's a really good resource. We've got a big list of places to look there. But then, Rav, maybe the, does the housing advice offer something like that? Um, no, I just think, so you can look for, are you sorry? I didn't, well, you, so there's the, the portal, right? You've got a kind of. Oh, we've got our property all, platform. Yeah. <laughs> so, our property platform. So, the property platform is that any landlord can. So, they're not from a particular agency or anything, but landlords who are looking for more students do register on the property platform. So, that would, yeah. So, that would be a good resource for you all to use. Thank you, Rav. Sorry, I did the uh, the classic webinar hint. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Carlo, George, um, First things first, let's go for, in fact, if you can cover 
how you found somewhere and how you chose the kind of location um, that you decided to live in. Um, was it kind of broad? Did you have specific areas in mind? What were you thinking about? I think we've had a couple of questions in the Q&A about that. Carlo, if we start with you. Sure. Um, so essentially, I, uh, with my flatmates, we decided to have to live somewhere in a half hour walking radius from campus. And uh, so what I did uh, was I had a week in July uh, when I flew to London and organized all the viewings in this week. So in the week, in the two weeks prior, I well checked right move in Zoopla, but I also contacted um, agents directly saying I was looking for a flat for three people in this zone when in this budget um um well uh, radius i guess uh and uh essentially uh i told them this is what i'm looking for if you have anything that could interest me just send me an email and or uh, call me and we can set up all the viewings necessary and so when i got to london i have basically like four viewings a day and uh i managed to like see loads of properties and uh, I'm, in the end I found the one that was that happened to to be the final choice on the last day um, on the Friday so I was very glad I did but um, I really I really uh, suggest contacting um, the agents because they can be really really helpful because they know what they have what they can offer and they know what they can Thank you very much, Carlo. Um, George, how about you? How did you kind of find something? What were you thinking about when you were thinking about areas? So um, we used uh, Rightmove and Zoopla mainly. Um, and I think what happens is they list properties and then they have the phone number for the agencies that you can call that are organising viewings and letting you contact your landlords. And so we rang them up and we just asked them, are like they available to do a viewing for us? Um, and say if they weren't, if it was sadly to, um, over busy, too busy, I mean, um, we could even just ask them if there are any other properties that were within, say, our budget or like within our radius. And I will say for um, Right Move and Zoopla, you can change the radius and you can put in um, how much like you want to spend per week or per month. Um, and so that's good to filter out properties. And also, I think you can turn on notifications so that say when a property does show up you can get notified by email um but i will say you have to be really like on it with that because quite often i found is that properties can show up and then they can just disappear um and there was a point made earlier about how um you like should always do a viewing to see your like property before you put down a deposit but like i know some people that couldn't make it in person and so it's also like really good to do virtual tours and also another comment about the virtual tours what i found is um when they do videos one you don't know when they did it um and also like sometimes they can like zoom out and do 0 0.5 and make it appear bigger so it's really important when you're asking for a virtual tour make sure it's in like one times view so that it's actually going to be to scale um and we did it over like a two-month period um Sadly, we didn't find it in one week. Um, there's a lot of competition on the market, so you have to be aware of that. Um, but if you look around, say, May, June time, normally it should be good. You should be able to find a property. It's just you need to get through the initial slump of calling loads of people up and putting down offers and whatnot. Thank you very much, George. Yeah, just to kind of add on to that point, something to be aware aware of and prepared for if you're coming to London. And honestly, the UK at the moment, we are in a kind of housing, uh, let's call it a pinch point here. Um, it's you are going to have to really put effort into looking. You are going to have to be willing to make some compromises potentially, um, particularly around budget. So and, and location is probably the big one. 
Um, George and Carlo are quite lucky that they're both living in walking distance. For a lot of students, that's not the case. Most of them are at least a bus ride away, sometimes a tube ride. Again, when you're thinking about budgeting, factor those sort of aspects into your into your budget. So if you're going to have to get the tube every day, um, you want to then look for sort of cheaper rent so that it's balancing that budget out. Um, things to think about, and because we've had a few questions around where students at, at UCL actually live. Um, for most students, it's quite interesting. It's like this block of north central London that tends to be where they go. But we are seeing more and more spread east and west. Um, still, most people are north of the river. There are a few who go who venture south of the river. Um, but generally speaking, it's in that kind of north central block. But often it's zone two. Sometimes it's zone three and four. Um, and for some students, that's quite nice. So I actually went to UCL and after first year lived in like at the edge of zone two and three for the whole time because a slightly cheaper and b i had mm, sort of parks nearby and bigger supermarkets and bigger supermarkets are cheaper um even things like uh, slightly cheaper cinemas <laughs> if you go slightly further out um so think about the other aspects of of living it's not your your whole life isn't gonna just be necessarily campus and home there are other things that you can think about when you're looking but yeah, definitely be be willing to put in some some hard work. Um, and yeah, as Carlo as Carlo and George said, it could be anything from like a week of really intense looking all the way through to a month. Um, so to the people in the Q and A who said, "Oh, I've been looking for a month, I'm still not finding anything," definitely check in with the University of London Housing Advice Service, uh, even if it's just for a kind of to to chat and um, talk about how how it's tricky. I think housing looking for housing can be quite um, exhausting. Um, so definitely, you know, even if you just need to blow off some steam, <laughs> book in with them, but keep going, you will find something and well done for starting, you know, nice and early. I just um, wanted to add a minute to that, if that's yeah. okay, sorry. So in May, the official date hasn't been organised, but we will be having our housing fair in May. So all the estate agents around London, majority of them will come to Senate House and have stalls. So you can, of course, as I'll come to Senate House that day and you can speak to all the agents directly. In Is that May next year? Yeah. That would okay, be so if it? you're thinking kind of like further, further ahead future, yeah. um, or for, you know, you've come and done your first year, you're thinking about the next one, definitely make use of that housing fair. Um, OK, fabulous. So what we'll start doing then is talking about kind of Flat viewings, well, actually, no, we've touched on that really, haven't we? Like how they work. Maybe let's think about what to look for when we're doing a viewing. Um, what to have your eyes peeled to notice. Um, Rav, any guidance for our um, students on that? Yeah, um, you want to look for signs. So um, in the UK, every property has to have a smoke alarm. If there's gas, there has to be a carbon monoxide alarm. So look out for these. If you can't see a smoke alarm, ask the question. If you see a wire hanging out that just looks odd, ask the question, why is there a wire hanging loose? Um, damp and mold is the most common one to look for. Um, signs of pest infestation. You know, When viewing a property, there's no harm in asking those questions. Um, I give all students this tip and it may make you laugh and it may sound weird, but if you when you're viewing a property and with an agent, ask them if you can use the toilet. Um, you can literally go in the bathroom, flush the toilet, so you know the toilet's flushing. You can literally check the taps, make sure there's water's coming through, and you can check the electricity by putting the light on. Just by doing that one simple thing, you, you can you've done most of the checks already. Okay, fantastic. Um, everyone's going to be using those toilets. <laughs> um, George or Carlo, any advice on like things to do when you're doing a viewing? Um, I know from my experience, um, taking lots of photos, uh, if the current tenants are there, like chatting to them and uh, asking questions about, you know, what's the water pressure actually like? Um, even things like bills, you could ask the tenants um, what those look like. Checking the windows is a big one with energy prices going up and uh, bills going up. Um, checking things like the rough feeling of insulation in the house and like whether there's double glazing, that's going to give you an idea of how, whether you'll have more affordable bills or less affordable bills. Um, but yeah, George and Carlo, any other sort of thoughts on um, flat viewings? Um, so I know that not all of us could attend all the viewings at once. So like often we did FaceTimes as well. So say like if one person goes and you can get on FaceTime or like 
call them for another means and then you can show the property as you're going around and like Amelia said really good to talk to current tenants if they're there because quite often they'll tell you the most like truthful um, experience of the flat because estate agents they're good they're informative but often like they're trying to sell you the flat so you need to be weary sometimes when they say like this property will be professionally cleaned when you can see like there's a obvious issue with the flat because they're trying to sell a property at the end of the day um and yeah also just asking like a lot of questions about like are there anything included in the contract so like heating or whatnot um and um Carlo do you have any other things well I think we said almost everything um it is very important to take a lot of pictures it, it is important to check the um, whether the appliances work and maybe ask what the general like consumption of the water electricity is especially the uh, current tenants are there <clears throat> um, but aside from that I, th I think the important thing to ask is um, ask the tenants if the landlord is responsive if maintenance is does come fast or not um, because that's also something important that you need to take into account you want a landlord that does get back to you when you send them an email um because uh you do not want to spend a week without hot water fabulous um we've had a couple of questions in the chat around um bills whether they're included generally speaking in private rentals no um but you do get the odd kind of private rental where sometimes one thing might be included or sometimes you do get um bills included but normally no and in terms of how much your bills are going to cost it varies a lot depending on whether you're willing to kind of change providers that kind of thing and then also things like you know are the windows single glazed double glazed that kind of thing so it's difficult to give a rough like accurate idea for what your bills would actually look like we've also had quite a lot of questions around how much people can expect to pay which areas are cheaper um the private housing guide that the university of london has has some information on that but the other thing that we would say is that because the market's changing quite a lot at the moment um the best thing to do is to start doing your own research um get on zoopla get on right move get on spare room see how much things cost um do some scrolling uh even if you're this is kind of your prep work and you're gonna actually start looking a little bit closer to september um have a little bit of a have a little bit of a, a google but i think there's chris's team has also done some work recently on kind of rental amounts and how much things cost and different areas so i think if we could pop the link to that article in the chat that would be really really helpful thank you very much um okay so we've talked a little bit about viewings um one other question i just wanted to say is so when we're looking at um kind of looking together as a group how might you go about deciding who's paying what so if there's like one big room typically in London it's quite normal for there to be a, a converted living room um so someone might have a much bigger bedroom than everyone else someone might get an ensuite room how do people tend to go about deciding the different rent amounts um maybe Rav have you got some guidance on that or um, Marlo, just from experience you could look at the floor pans and check the dimensions and kind of come to an agreement between yourselves and say, okay, your room is this much a bit bigger. So would you mind? It's just having that conversation. There is no right way or wrong way of working out the rent. But if you really want to work out, you and your group want to work out, okay, um, the exact best way to do it, look at the floor pans and divide the figures. Hey, thank you very much. Um, that can be a way of making budgets work as well. Um, if someone's got a slightly higher budget and someone's got a slightly lower budget, it's a very easy way to decide who gets the small room. Um, so now let's talk about contracts. Uh, so we found somewhere, we're ready, we're putting in an offer. Um, guidance on contracts. Obviously read it. That's the big one. Don't sign something that you've not read. Um, if students are confused about wording in a contract, that's quite that can be very common, especially if it's the first one you're looking at. Um, we so the students' union have a contract um, checking service through their advice service, but Rav, I think you also do contract checking, right? That's correct. We will check the whole contract with you, and we will also do a land registry check to make sure the owner is the owner of the property and has the legal right to rent it to you. So that's all free for you to use with us. Oh, fantastic. 
Um, and can offer holders use that as well? I believe so, yes. Yeah, okay, fantastic. Um, just before we move on, Chris, any guidance for international students around uh, that kind of thing? Or is it just pretty much similar to everyone else? You need to read it and if you're confused, get advice. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it, it's just reading it. Really, I can't add any, add any more to that. Yeah, but I think that's good. Okay, fab. Um, so then we also mentioned upfront rent and guarantors at the start of the call, just in case we've had anybody new join the call or if we've uh, if anybody missed this point. UCL does have a guarantor scheme that you can look at. There are limitations. Um, there are sort of only certain students who are. Um, eligible so you have to be international or you need to be in very specific um sort of economic circumstances um and there are like it, it's got capped amounts so you need to kind of consider that when you're looking for, for at that as a guarantor scheme the upfront rent thing um that is quite normal um and it's becoming more common am i right in thinking that rav Yes, unfortunately. Um, I've had some students, they've been asked to pay two years up front. Unfortunately, it's uh, that's the market. That is the market. Um, thank you very much. Um, so then, the, there's one point that we just wanted to mention. Um, this is probably more for Carlo and George. Professional cleans. How do you, what's your experience of the, the professional clean aspect of a contract? George? Uh, um, so... Professional cleans, um, they vary like very much. So I know one of my friends that when they just moved into their flat, um, I think someone just literally went around with like some um, sanitizing spray and just clean the surfaces. Whereas some people like paid for cleaners to come in and work like all day, um, but that can be more costly. So it very much depends on how much you're willing to spend on it. So I spoke to one person um and they said they spent about I think it was 200 pounds on a professional clean but that was so that they didn't have to say spend a few days or even a week cleaning it all up and they just had somebody come in for two days to help them out with it um I will say like when you're moving in um it's probably a good idea to ask like more about how it will be cleaned before you come in so say if you see like you can sometimes see mold when you're looking at bathrooms or even in the kitchen so it's important to point that out and ask like will this be like cleaned up before I move in or basically say I want it cleaned up not will this be um and yeah uh, Carla do you have any other things to note well uh my flat was really clean when I moved in um it was professionally cleaned properly uh there were like just a couple of things that hadn't been cleaned but it's i mean i'm talking about like where the fan is above the hob so like not really something that hurts too bad um but definitely all the bathrooms were perfect um i, I made sure that they were going to clean it but then again uh my, my landlord had it all sorted out and um after that i we don't we never really had to like take get a professional cleaner we never really felt like it was uh in a particularly bad conditions in, at any in any location so the flat was just fine to clean ourselves thank you very much um so yes be prepared to uh, either spend some real time and graft uh cleaning or you might need to stump up for a for a cleaning cost at the end of tenancy um so now let's talk a little bit about moving uh so moving in and I think we'll cover things like how you actually go about it getting stuff and like moving things and for those I think I'll come to the students and then um what you need to do when you first move in Rav I think we'll go to you for that and then maybe Yasmin any advice on like moving cheaply um so George and Carlo if I stay with you to start um how how did you go about kind of moving things in George it might have been quite different for you as a as a UK student versus Carlo um let's maybe let's start with Carlo as an international student well actually my aunt lives in London so I brought all of my stuff to hers uh at the end of first year uh and then I just uh got an uber from her house with all the all the all my belongings inside to my flat and it was just 20 pounds so it was like Really oh, not. dreamy. Yeah. 
Okay, really so not, Carlo's got a uh, cheat mode on. Um, that's that's great though. That is good advice. You know, don't be afraid to ask to if you know people who live in London. If you've got friends who are already here, it's a good idea to use your network. That's something that we um, would definitely recommend. Even if it's so, say you're a student who's coming from um, a specific university abroad, and you know that there's been somewhere someone in London who's from your university, maybe you could connect with them, see if you can like buy their old saucepan, that kind of thing. Um, that might make things a little bit easier and cheaper. Um, George, how did you move? Um, well, you I was I was lucky because I live in the UK, so we just moved it all by car. But I do know for some people, so say if you're like in first year looking for second year accommodation, so the international students that I knew, they put their stuff in storage facilities and then they had somebody helped move them across um, when they were moving into their new property. Um, but say if you're moving to London for the first time or you don't have a storage facility, I know that quite a lot of people just end up buying things when they're here. Um, so you can look at things like Facebook Marketplace, which is really good for some cheap and like high quality stuff, especially around like September, because I think a lot of students start selling off their stuff when they're moving out. So you can get some really good deals. Um, and as well, yeah, no, I think that's all actually. <laughs> Sorry. Really? Thank you. And then Yasmin, um, any guidance on moving cheaply? Yeah, can I just add about storage facilities? So if you are looking into a storage facility, really compare their prices. I think there's quite a lot of compare sites so you can see which ones are nearest to you and which ones are more affordable. Um, ask if they offer any student discounts as well, because some of them do. Um, work out how much storage space you actually need so you're not overpaying. Um, also, maybe pair up with other students just to see if you can cut down costs and maybe share storage space together. Um, and make sure you look into the cancellation period as well. Um, advice on moving cheaply. So I think, um, firstly, check what your accommodation provider already provides. Um, so you're not purchasing items that you don't need. So some student accommodation will kind of provide furniture and appliances already. Um, some private property, rented properties um, come already furnished. So just double check, um, just so you're not um, buying items that you kind of don't need. Also speak to your housemates or your flatmates to see what they already have as well. And maybe you could work out sharing your furniture and appliances so you're not um, spending money, more money. Um, make a, a list of kind of essential items that you need and stick to your budget. Um, I think there's kind of plenty of university checklists out there that kind of provide you with a checklist of what of the things you might need to move in. Um, in terms of finding cheap goods, I would always direct students to affordable high street shops. So there's like Primark and Poundland, Wilco, b and IKEA, um, Argos as well. Remember to keep an eye on kind of discounts as well. So as a student, you'd kind of be eligible for uni days and student beans. Um, most retailers offer really good student discounts as well at the start of the academic year. Um, so really keep an eye out for them. Um, also, yeah, look into secondhand goods like um, Carlos and George have, have mentioned. Um, Gumtree are kind of good for secondhand goods, but also be cautious. Um, charity shops as well, you can find really good bargains on there for affordable um, bits for your home. Thank you very much. Um, love that. Love the uh, places to find things uh, cheaply and affordably. Um, OK, so great. Let's talk about when you first arrive, you're moving in, move in day, uh, inventory checks guidance to how to get that deposit back at the end. Rav, I'm going to come to you for this one. Um, so when you move in, my advice, even if there is an inventory, take pictures of absolutely everything. Um, I know with Android, you can do timestamp. I'm not sure about Apple, but I'm guessing you can. If you can do timestamp photos, that would be great. Inventory report, what, we've no, what, what I've noticed, the inventory report tends to be half the size of the exit report, so um, which makes no sense to me. But take your own pictures of everything. If you notice anything that's damaged, send in an email straight away to the agent or landlord. Just say, hi, just moved in. I've noticed there's a crack in the flooring. Here's a picture. So that 
will at the end of the tenancy if they try to deduct money from your deposit to say oh well, there's a crack in the floor it must have been you you can say well actually no i sent you an email when i moved in so that will prevent you from losing out on your deposit um with the inventory please read it carefully uh, only sign it if you're happy with it and any communications i'm going a bit beyond now but with any communications you have with the agent or landlord i advise to try and stay away from whatsapp because with WhatsApp, you can either party can delete messages. So email, text message is more secure. Even if there's an emergency and you have a telephone conversation, send a follow up email. That is your evidence. And by doing that, you will reduce the risk of having money deducted from your deposit at the end. Also, um, most of your contracts will require you to contact utility suppliers. I strongly recommend do this on the first day. It's not detriment if you can't, but it'd be better for you. You know, let's say, for example, the gas supplier is British Gas. Um, your landlord or agent should be able to tell you who the suppliers are. Contact British Gas and say, hi, just moved into the property. This is the meter reading. This will prevent you from paying for the people that lived there before. And do the same at the end. When you leave, say, hi, this is the meter reading. We're leaving. So that will prevent further complications. Same with council tax. Now with council tax, everyone that's in the property, if you're full-time students, you will be exempt. So one of you just needs to contact um, your local council, create an account, provide everyone's student status, and you'll be exempt. But the moment one of you is no longer a full-time student, then you will all be liable for the council tax. But it is best to inform the council on the first day you move in. That was really great advice. Thank you very much, Rav. Um, yes, my guidance would always be write everything down uh, and send it to the send it to the agent. From personal experience, um, I had a, a landlord who tried to charge, uh, tried tried to take quite a lot of our um, our security deposit at the end of our tenancy, and because we had all the receipts <laughs> of all the times that we'd contacted them, and we had photos of when we'd moved in and what the property was like, got it all back. Um, don't be afraid to kind of I don't want to say fight your case, but advocate advocate for yourself and be will, like be, be ready and willing to negotiate um, the housing market and sort of approaching landlords and like how you how you sort of deal with them. Obviously, you need to be professional, um, but definitely don't be afraid to kind of push back if there are things that are unfair. Um, we have had a few questions around council tax. Um, if you are sort of sharing with professionals so if you're the maybe the only student the only full-time student living in a in the property Rav do you have any guidance on how to deal with that you will be liable for council tax unfortunately there's no way of avoiding it there will be a 25 percent discount yeah. but with regards to I've mentioned in my slides joint liability so that goes across all bills as well you can't unfortunately say well I'm a student only they should pay bills damages, everything. In the eyes of the contract, you're all one person. So unfortunately, if if there is someone in the property who's not a full-time student, you will have to pay all council tax. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's that's everything on, on sort of moving in. Unless, Chris, did you have any guidance specifically for international students around like how to go about moving in, um, advice on like bills and things? Um, with regards to moving in, there's nothing particularly to add to the other students. Obviously, when you arrive here, you'll have what you get. Um, for any sort of packages that maybe you want to get sent over, obviously make sure that you're in the UK first. So time it so those packages arrive for you once you're already here. Don't try and send things ahead of time. That's probably the worst idea. Um, and uh, with regarding bills, do you mean sort of bu budgeting wise or splitting them up or things like that? You're saying to bills? Or just sort of if you're brand new to the country, you're not 100% sure of how things work. Um, guidance around like whether there are people who can help out and sort of help with explaining things. Um, again, the London, the University of London Housing Advice Service or the SU Advice Service are probably the, the places to go. Yeah, with regards to that, we've actually created a video on that with two international students. So I'll share that in the chat. So yes. there's no, no point me explaining that. I'll share that in the chat. Amazing. OK, so check out the chat if you're an international student and you want to learn more about what it's like moving in and bills and things. Um, 
advice for during the tenancy, I'm conscious we are coming up to kind of four minutes till the end. Um, we have already mentioned like reporting any issues immediately in writing, avoiding causing any damage. <laughs> um, that is a, a big one. Um, if you want to get that deposit back, try to not break things. Um, but things do sometimes break and it might not be your fault. And so then report it, let your um, agent or landlord know. Um, and ensure you pay your rent on time. That's a big one. Um, lots of students will sort of set up a standing order. Often it comes through. So if you're in a shared property, it would be one person paying the rent. Everybody else pays theirs, their rent in a little bit to that person. And then they send it to the to the landlord or to the agent. Um, oh, there's a wasp in my room. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Classic webinar uh, moment. OK, and then the other thing, maybe so. Let's go to George and Carlo advice for during the tenancy, maybe getting along with flatmates. Um, and then I think Yasmin, if could you talk a little bit about the SU advice service if things go wrong? Um, George, Carlo, I'll start with you. How how do you kind of any guidance about like having a nice time? <laughs> Carlo. Um, I think one of the most important things is dividing uh, well, the cleaning in between the flatmates. I think we, so me and my flatmates, we had um, essentially a document where we wrote all the things that each had to do and divide it as evenly as we could. So that, and without rotation though, I know people do rotation, but we decided that it would be better to just do what we knew how to do well, just do it in even um, chunks. So um, I think that's really important because otherwise you might start resenting your um, uh, flatmates because I don't know, they, they, you feel like they don't clean enough or they don't help out and that you're always the one cleaning the kitchen and uh, um, vacuuming the floor. So definitely I suggest doing that. I did it a little too late. I admit I did it three months in, which was a bad choice. Uh, so please do it as soon as you can. Um, and also, um, come when it comes to moving in, personally, my agent uh, had taken pictures of the entire flat, all of all the like little damage that then could, that the landlord could have like attributed to us. So that was really nice. Uh, I don't know if it's common practice, but my agent sent me like so many pictures, like everything. So I really didn't have to worry. Um, and uh, and then uh, I, when I read my contract, I saw that it said um, that if there are, there is any damage due to use, um, then um, it's it's no problem, and they they would cover it. So that was also a great a great um, part of my contract. Thank you very much, um, George. Any little tips from you? Yeah, I think communication is key. So make it out from the start that if there's anything that you guys are disagreeing with or I'm not saying that you're always going to be in disagreement, but it's really important that you can feel comfortable, like telling your flatmates, say like, oh, like I wasn't happy about this. Like, could you maybe do this better or like at least have a discussion about it? And I think when there's issues with the physical flat itself, yeah, contact the agents directly. Like you need to be on top of that because like once that's done and that's sorted then you don't have to worry about that potentially cutting into the disc um sorry security deposit uh because you don't want that um yeah yeah okay thank you very much also very conscious we are getting uh near the end of the time but we'll, we might go a minute or two over um yasmin um could you tell us a little bit about the advice service and what support the union can offer if there is stuff that goes wrong um during the tenancy yeah, um, so we in the advice team offer advice around tenancies, deposits. We also have a renting checklist that you're able to download on the SU webpage. Um, my colleagues offer a free contract check advice um, service as well. Um, in terms of the financial money, money and budgeting, myself and my colleague Amrit will be offering one-to-one -one, um, budgeting appointments for students at the start of the academic year. And um, we'll be promoting this at Welcome Week and it will be promoted on our website. So please um, keep a lookout for that. Also, if you are kind of find yourself struggling financially during your studies, um, we do offer kind of su financial support and we offer hardship funds as well. Um, so, yeah, you can find more information on the website. 
Thank you very much. Um, so we are coming to the end of our time. We've got some more questions in the Q&A. Um, what I would suggest doing is if your question hasn't been answered, please do send it across to us um, via social media is probably the easiest way. Um, if you go on Instagram and do at UCL uh, accommodation, that's a good place. Or you could get in touch with the University of London Housing Advice Service. Um, thank you very much to all of our panellists for your time and for your answers. Um, and thank you very much to our attendees for coming. Um, as I say, if you if your question hasn't been answered, um, get in touch with us outside of this call, um, especially if it's kind of very specific policy things, um, or even, you know, just drop us a line if you've got like a, it was a question that you, it seems really easy, but you want to know the answer to. Um, thanks very much, everybody. And I hope you have a great rest of the day and a great weekend.